Welcome to the first in a series of videos sponsored by EducationWantsToBeFree.com. This series will be on preparing for National Novel Writing Month. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, excuse me, I must scratch my nose, and I'll leave that in the video, I think. National Novel Writing Month is a crazy time in November every year when hundreds, in fact thousands of people from around the world get together and decide to try to do the impossible. That is, we try to write a 50,000 word novel in a month. It's kind of like running a marathon. You don't think you can do it until you've done it. I did this first back in 2006 and didn't think I'd get past 25,000 words, I ended up with 60,000. You can do this. I've done it four times already, and my second NaNoWriMo novel was picked up by Musadup Publishing uh, this year, and I have a sequel that I wrote last year, which I'm preparing, and I'm hopeful will be picked up uh, sometime uh, before the end of this year for a release late next year. So this will work. You can do this. And this is our first in a series of tips and this time I'm going to talk about the premise. The premise. National Novel Writing Month is about writing, you got it, a novel. And every novel starts with an idea. That idea we call the premise. The premise is a one-line description of what the story is all about. Usually it is describing what sets the story in motion. For instance, let me give you my premise for this year. Uh, it is another follow-up to my NaNoWriMo novel of 2007, and I wrote a cozy mystery that happened to be placed in a colony on the moon near the end of the 21st century. Okay, kind of fun, kind of different. And the main characters are Carolyn, a history professor and former FBI profiler, along with Mike Cherovic, a former Dallas PD homicide detective who is now a professor of criminology at Armstrong University on the Moon. So these two are quite mismatched. He's brusque, somewhat uh, uh, offensive at times. Bull in a china shop, she is very refined, very cultured, and so they constantly clash throughout this story. But of course, in the end, they find out that they have a lot more in common than uh, against each other. So, in this story, the follow-up, and not meaning be, to be a spoiler to the other stories, uh, they have gotten married and they are going to go on holiday to a domed resort on the moon, a clear dome setting right on the surface of the moon. Most of the colonies are built underground on the moon to protect them from the meteorites, etc. But this is a tourist attraction but usually for the you know, high-end tourist. And along the way they are given a tour of the facilities by the owner, a billionaire who is also a collector of lunar artifacts from the early days of lunar exploration. He is just about ready to turn over his collection to the history department at Armstrong University when he is killed and his body dumped in a crater 
during a total eclipse of the moon, which of course is an eclipse of the sun from the point of view of the moon. Okay, so that's the basic uh, storyline. Now here's what the premise is going to read. While on vacation at the, a domed resort on the surface of the moon, the owner of the resort is killed, and Mike and Carolyn must solve the murder. That's it. That's the basics. Try to keep it down to 25 words or less. Now there are some key elements to the premise. Number one, a character. All stories are about somebody doing something. Now in my case there are two characters, but you know, you get the idea. Usually one or two main characters. Secondly, a location. In most, but not all cases, location is sort of the extra character in the room. Everything takes place somewhere. And usually where it takes place makes a difference to how the story runs. Third is the action. In other words, what is it that this character is going to do? What is the problem they're going to solve? What is the challenge they have to meet? What is the difficulty, and usually there's a difficulty involved, that they need to overcome. For instance, take Huckleberry Finn, uh, a story we've all read, most of us. Who's the character? A teenage boy running away from home. The other character? A runaway slave named Jim. Those are our characters. So I would just write down uh, orphan boy running away from home and Jim, a runaway slave. Then the second thing is we're in the antebellum south. Antebellum meaning before the Civil War. And what are they doing? Well, Huck is going to help Jim escape to freedom. Now, a lot of other stuff takes place in the story, but that's the core story idea. So, how, so let's put this together. A A teenage boy living in the antebellum south runs away from home and helps an escaped slave run to freedom. Okay, not terribly smooth, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because you're the only one who's going to read it. Remember, the this is all for you. But try to keep it under 25 words. That's a good ballpark because as you get further and further away, then you're trying to tell the whole story instead of just giving the premise. Later on, we're going to talk a little bit about taking this premise and turning it into a core story line. Not quite a plot outline, but a core story line. But that's all I have time for right now. Hope you'll tune in again later on, and uh, if you want, we've got a class going on right now at educationwantstobefree.com that is dealing specifically with how to prepare for NaNoWriMo. And you can join any time during the month of October. Uh, the class is free, and and I'm going to actually be engaged in um, telling a lot of stuff, interacting with the students, which normally I don't do with our free classes because I don't have time. But hey, this is fun. I enjoy it. So I'm going to be jumping into the discussion on the discussion boards, preparing lessons. We already have up the first 
uh, lessons uh, for the first week of October. New lessons will be appearing each week and by the end of that time you will be prepared uh, for NaNoWriMo. So, until next time, this is Terry Main, and I hope you'll stop by and visit us at http colon slash slash www education wants to be free dot com slash classroom